Today we're going to learn how to use Float Curve and Geometry Nodes to create animations like this. So let's do it. First of all, let's get the camera, the light, and go to Geometry Nodes and create a new profile. We are going to use a simple curve line, so later we can change the shape of this line. Here we have a line, and now what I want is to move it in this axis. So I'm going to select here 1 meter in X and here 0. Now I'm going to set this view so we can see better. And what I want now is to add more points because we want to change the shape of this line. And right now we have only two points, the start and the end. So let's use resample curve. This will be the resolution of this line. Now what I want is to change the shape of this line. So we need to change the position of these points. So let's use set position. What I want is to see this line from here to here, so using X and Z. So let's isolate this axis with combine I, and here let's bring position and let's isolate with separate axis. So let's use X to Z. So we have something like this. So this will be the base. And remember, we have one meter here in X. So right now what I want is to modify the shape of this curve without using math nodes. So how we can do it? This is easy, using float curve. And if we add it here, it will be the same because this shape is the same like this one. However, if I want to change this, then the only thing I have to do is to click here to create a point and start moving this. And you will see that in real time, we have the same shape. So you can create the shape that you want just adding points and moving this. And if you want more resolution, because right now, as you can see, we have low resolution, remember to add more points. For example, 200. So with this node, you can create the shape that you want with this curve line. If you want, for example, to make this sharp, then click here. And it's going to be sharp. For example, I can click here and click here. As you can see, I'm getting sharp lines. To the later point, select it and press here. Also, what you can do is to select a point, and this is to move it in X, so from left to right, and this to up and down. And if you look here, you can make it again with automatic handles, as you can see. And if you click here, it's called auto clamp, and basically it makes it more perfect. Look. So I can click here and click here again. So we are getting again this shape. Okay, now how I can make this longer in this axis. So to make it longer, what we have to do is to increase this. So if I increase this, for example, two meters, now this is two meters in X. And if I want more here, then I'm going to select minus two meters. So we have this shape. So why we have the shape only here? That's because this node works with factor that go from zero to one. So this is zero and this is one. That's why we only can add the shape here. However, don't worry, if you want to expand this shape, we can do a little tricks. For example, if you want to make it higher, what we have to do is to add after this, a math node and select multiply. So if we select one, it's the same. And if we increase this, we are expanding the height of this curve. So basically, we are expanding the Z. So you can make it higher or lower. I'm going to leave it in one. And if you want to expand this in this direction to make it wider, then you need to add this before. So let's make a copy. And now, if I increase this number, I'm going to compress, as you can see, the curve. And if you want to expand it, then we need to decrease this number. 
Also, what you can do is to select divide. So it's more intuitive. So less number, more compressed. Higher number, more expand. I'm going to leave one. Now, how we can move this in this axis? In next, to move this, we need to add here a math node in add. If I select zero, it's the same. And if I increase this, I can move this shape in this axis. So if I add one, basically I'm adding one value. So basically it's pushing this one meter in X. So with this, we can make this shape. Okay, let's select zero and let's call this animation. This will be amplitude and this one altitude. So we have this setup and now what I want is to create like a monitor hospital. So to do this, we are going to change this shape. So I'm going to reset this shape, clicking here and select reset. And to create like this shape, like a monitor, first of all, what I'm going to do is to set up this line flat. So how we can do it? Just moving this, this one, in this axis, remember is this one, 0 0.5. And then this one, the same. So let's say this one and select 0 0.5. So now we have a straight line. And between this point and this point, we are going to create like a shape with triangles. So what I'm going to do is to do some points. For example, one here, one here, and do something like this, then something like this, another here, and let's do another one. I'm going to add another one and move this here. So to fix this and make it better, I'm going to use this feature. So let's select this one and start one by one, clicking here. Really important to avoid this, try to set up these ones in 0 0.5. 0 0.5 and this one in 0 0.5. And if you see these little weird shapes, then remember to add more points. For example, 500. Or if you want, you can add 1000 points. So that's what we have right now. You can try to make it matter if you want. So that's what I have, as you can see. And remember, if you want to animate this, the only thing we have to do is to move this. So we can create this animation. For example, it's flat and then appears this shape. This one animation, or what you can do if you want, is to add here a trim curve. So if you decrease the end, you can do this animation. You start in zero, and then you rebuild the line, and you create this shape. Beep, beep. Remember, you can increase the altitude, the height, and also the amplitude. Another tip I want to tell you, if you want to select one peak, top or bottom, and make it higher than one, or less than one, because remember, this is one. So to do this, if you go here in float node and you click this button, here we have the limit. So X and Y have a minimum value from zero and maximum value from one. However, you can increase, for example, this one. That is the high, right? So for example, I can click here and select maximum three. So that means that now if I click here, I can make it higher than one. Look. So we are not going to see it in this graph editor. However, we can see here the real value and you can see it in real time in the viewport. So I can make it until three. So as you can see right now, I'm trying to make it higher. And I can because the limit is three meters because I selected three meters. And if I want the same, this one 
but down, then I select minimum minus three. So I can say this one and make it less than one, as you can see. The only problem is that here you cannot see the real point. But if you want to do it, remember, you can do it thanks to this. But right now I'm going to select zero and one. And I'm going to press Ctrl Z to leave it like before. Okay, now how we can animate this and make appear copies of this shape after or below the original shape. So to do this is really easy. The only thing we have to do is to add here a fraction. So let's select fraction. And now we have copies of the same shape. So remember, the original shape is one meter. So this is the original shape. And thanks to fraction, is repeating every one value the same shape, as you can see. So if now we animate this, it's going to appear every time this shape. And we can create this effect, this animation. However, if you want to increase the separation between every original shape, so for example, I want this, but I want a longer flat space between this one and this one. Then instead of using fraction, we are going to use his big brother, this one, floor modulo. So this is the same like fraction. If I select one, it's the same. However, if I increase this, instead of repeating every one value, I can say every two values. So that means that we have the original shape on value, and then until the second value, remember, this is one value, another value, and I say every two values, so one, two, so here it will appear again. Let's check it. So as you can see, every two values, it appears again. Or what you can say is, for example, every three values. So basically with this, you can define how long is this space until every shape that we create here. So if I animate this, as you can see, now we have a longer space to create this more realistic hospital monitor of her bit. I'm going to select two because I prefer it. And if you want to animate this without keyframes, remember to use a scene time. And now let's press play. And we have this really cool animation. And remember, if you want to make this longer, the line, then go here and increase this. So more you increase this, longer is the original line. I'm going to leave it in two and two because I like it like this. And remember, if you have any problem of resolution, you see something weird, just add more points. Now let's give a mess to this because if we try to export this, we are not going to see anything because it doesn't have any mesh. So I'm going to give a mesh, but first of all, I'm going to make the background dark. And to give a mesh, remember to use curve to mesh. And let's select curve cycle. Let me select this view so we can see better. And I'm going to select something like 0 0.01. So we have this animation, as you can see, really cool. I'm going to select fill caps. And now let's add a material. So let's select send material. Let's select the default material. And let's go, for example, here. Select the shade editor. Press N to hide this. And what I want is to make it a mid light. For example, green like a monitor in the hospital. I'm going to increase the strength and I'm going to set this view. And to see the glow, remember in Blender 4.2, we have to go to Compositor, activate always, and then we go to the Compositor, enable nodes, I'm going to press A and point to center the nodes. And here, let's add glare. And let's select or this one or this one. I prefer this one because it's more subtle. So now we have this animation. Really cool. 
And now let's go a step further. So at the beginning, I won really bright with the opacity 100%. At the end, I don't want light. So zero opacity. So to do this, what we have to do, let's come back to geometry nodes. We need to get the spline parameter, the factor of this line and connect it here. So to do this, we need to get the spline parameter before this. So before converting to curve to mesh and after set position. So let's use a store name attribute. And what attribute we want? We want basically a spline parameter factor. Remember factor is the information from the start of the curve and the end, from zero to one. And let's give a name, factor. And now here, let's bring an attribute node, connect it here in color, and here we're going to write the word factor. So now as you can see, we don't have any light because we don't have anything here. But if I write factor, this is working. So as you can see, here is brighter than here. Now to change the colors, what we're going to do is to add here a color ramp. And select green. And now as you can see, here is brighter and here is black. What you can do also is to push the black. So as you can see, we can control which part is black and which part is green. And also what you can do is to connect this to alpha. So now this is not black and it's transparent. If you want to see this noise, then here I'm going to press N, go to options and select in render method blended. And now you can see before and after. And this is transparent. And remember here you can push the part that is invisible, transparent. Or what you can do is the transition better, selecting is. So this is after and this before with linear. Honestly, I prefer with is. So this is the final setup. By the way, if we don't use the reveal line, you can delete this. So basically we create a shape with this. Remember, you can change it anytime. Here you can add more altitude, more amplitude. And with this, you can decide how many space do you want between every shape. If you want more or less. And with this, we are creating this animation that the shapes are being pushed in this direction. And thanks getting to the factor, we added a material from the start to the end, making the end in one brighter and more opacity than the start that is black and transparent. And if you want to loop this, what I will do is to select this view. Let's show everything. Actually, I'm going to select this view. And right now, we are using a scene time one second to push this animation. So that means 24 frames by second. Because remember, I'm here. 24 frames by second. So if you want to loop this, you can select, for example, 24 frames. And in theory, it should work. Okay, it's not working because. Okay, it's not working because I used this and I forgot. So we need to multiply by 2. Because if not, it's being cut. So let's multiply this by 2. Will be 48. And now it should be loop. As you can see right now. So remember, it depends also if you added this and which value you have here. So you need to multiply the number of frames by this number. So I hope you like this video. And if you learned something and you enjoy it, I will appreciate a lot that you give a like, subscribe. And remember, you can donate this project and many more on my Patreon. And see you in the next video.